Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to show you all how to uh, begin modeling the face. Now this can be difficult. Um, if you follow it step by step the way I'm doing it, um, you shouldn't have too much of an issue with it. But um, also I left uh, my old videos up, um, three parts to them uh, below in the canvas shell. And um, I don't know how many parts this one will take, but um, I'm going to just go ahead and get started on it. Uh, so one of the first things I'm going to do is I have my references on a, a layer. I'm also going to select my base mesh layer, create layer from selected in the bottom right hand corner. I'm going to rename it by double clicking on layer one, just double click on it like so. And I'm just going to call it base mesh. And Eh, you could change the color. I'll make mine black. And what that does is every time shading and wireframe on shaded is on, it'll be uh, the the wireframe will be black. You don't really need to do that for the reference images because they don't have any uh, topology to them. So um, anyway, I'm going to start by just hiding the base mesh. I don't even want to pay attention to it. Just kind of forget it's there for now. I only want to focus on the face. I don't want to worry about any other geometry that's happening just right here, right? So um, the videos below, I have a uh, portrait uh, or a photo reference portrait of myself, basically, um, 3D model. And this time I'm going to do it using uh, my concept art here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by uh, creating a cylinder. And then drag it up into place. And I'm just going to rotate it around at 90 degrees. And then I'm going to set my poly cylinder instead of eight, I'm going to go with 12 this time. And I really only need to worry about one side and I'm just going to go to this side. And the first thing I'm going to do is with this here is I'm obviously, as usual, always going to delete the caps. But I'm also now going to switch to vertex mode. And what this is, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cl run click and drag and just drag these into places where I've got uh, the eye, uh, where I want the geometry to go. And I'm just going to basically outline the eye with this, just like so. And I probably want a little bit more in there, um, but for now, that'll work. Something like so. And I don't want, I'm, I'm going to bring this actually over a little bit more, and I'm going to bring this one over a little bit more. Doesn't need to be perfect, but just close enough. Something like that. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, switch to my edge mode. I'm going to select the entire edge loop here. And I'm going to run an extrude. And now you're going to notice that these faces here are black instead of gray. So in order to fix that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select my object and under the modeling tab under uh, mesh display I'm going to just do reverse and now it's going to reverse my uh, what they're, they're called normals so uh, it's going to re basically reverse the face um, so that the outside in this case outside is gray and then the part that we won't be seeing is black and that um, that black side is actually like a, an invisible face. So let me explain that really quickly. Although basically many, many game engines, 3D software, uh, rendering engines, so on and so forth, all this 3D software can typically read both sides. However, um, just so you're aware, uh, it can definitely cause issues if you don't have the normals set to the right direction. Um, but just so you're aware, if I turn on this back face culling, 
and I'm going to turn off my shading and wireframe unshaded. You'll notice that the, the that side of the black side actually is not there, um, and it's because we can't see it, and that's because these are actually two-dimensional planes that can only uh, display um, any visual. Uh, information on X and Y basically on these faces so um, which is why you can't see it on the opposite side but they are in as a matter of fact still there and it can cause uh, many issues especially if you're you know a heavy gamer you want to create models for video games you know really anything um, it can cause issues so just so you're aware uh, if you ever do run into that in the future um, maybe you'll uh, turn back face calling off. Uh, remember, oh yeah, maybe if I reverse the normals, it'll work perfectly fine and probably will. Anyway, so here's my eye. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my vertex. And I'm just going to start to basically do the outside here to sort of... Just be a little bit smaller, but also line up for, uh, better. And I've got these lines, especially if you have a photo reference, you may have some kind of crease, uh, wrinkle, uh, eyelid, what have you, that um, can help you define exactly where these go. But you know, it just needs to look something similar to this, okay? Now with that being said, um, I've got the start to my eye, but why do we start to model it this way? Good question, right? So um, I want to show you something really quickly, and I find this to be an excellent example. And you'll notice, um, this is the one I wanted to show you. You'll notice what I'm doing here is, you see this green section? These are called edge loops. And this is uh, specifically for animation purposes. Um, you can see it in a lot of these different um, models here, where they're covering edge loops of hum for human faces, so on and so forth. So we have this one around the eye. Then we have what I call the Robin mask right here. It basically controls the eyebrows and squinting, right? Stuff like that. And these are really important because otherwise you're not going to get proper deformation in the face. Um, and the, that's the reason why we're modeling it the way we are, is for these proper edge loops. Let's take a closer look at this, uh, closer look at this one. Um, this one isn't identical to the previous one, but a lot of those same edge loops are there, one around the eye. Um, they sort of have a robin mask going around. It's a little slightly different, but still same concept. Um, and then edge loops around the mouth. Um, but this one's a little bit uh, better. Um, we have these edge loops coming around. It's uh, color coded. And then we have this one that wraps around the jaw from the nose, um, the bridge of the nose basically all the way around to the bottom of the jaw and back around. So um, we're going to follow this style um, pretty closely. Uh, let's take a look at this one. This one again, edge loops, color coded, um, has that Robin mask-esque, what I call the Robin mask. Um, but other than that, um, you know, you can always take a look at other types of topology here. We'll see the face. This one's uh, got the same thing going around the bridge of the nose, down around the jaw, around the lips, around the eyes. Um, so on and so forth. So you'll see a lot of different um, styles and here's one also where this is where we're basically at. We just did this edge loop around the eye and we're going to continue this edge loop a few times and we're going to do the jaw around the lips and things like that. So just so you're aware. So now back to our model. What I will continue doing is I'm going to create one more edge loop going around. So I'm just going to double click that and extrude. And I'll go to like here for that. 
and I could even start to, you know, figure out exactly how I'm doing this. But I'm going to give it a moment, and I'm going to extrude one more time before I start doing anything else. Okay. So now that I've gotten that taken care of, I'm going to select this vertice here on the far edge. Actually, I'm going to bring that in. Clean these up a little bit, too. Um, like I said, this doesn't need to be perfect. Um, we're going to do fine-tune adjustments later. But really what I'm doing is I'm just trying to follow some of these l lines that I've drawn in um, for this model. And that's pretty good, actually. That'll work. I just don't want it to be too accentuated. I could have just probably grabbed the entire edge loop, but I wanted to be a little bit more um, neat with it. I could even go with one more, just one more. Um, and yours might be different if you have a, you know, some kind of creature, uh, anything. It could really vary how your model will be. So um, big into pushing and pulling verts here. And I added one more just for this crease here for the bags of the eyes. This one will bring up. Eh, that's fine. Something like that. Okay. So now that I've got these edge loops started, right, following the, the, the face, what I like to do is I like to come back here and just grab one of these, maybe even this entire row, right, this entire row of uh, vertices, not the edge, the verts. I'm going to tap B on my keyboard and then bring this down. Uh, you can see over here uh, under soft select you can adjust things. Um, however, I'm just going to hold B and left click to adjust the size of my soft selection. And then I'm going to start to drag this back. And then I'm also going to start to rotate it. And then I'm going to take another look here and see how. And in fact, maybe not grabbing the entire edge loop on the verts, maybe just grabbing this one here. <clears throat> Let's start to rotate that around. Maybe even this one too. I'm also going to do the same thing here. And bring this in, because this is where the nose will be. And start to shape that eye out a little bit. And really anywhere you feel it could use some of that softness. All right. So now that I've got the one eye there, and it's starting to uh, pull, I'm going to go to the my side and pull that up. Now the other thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this right away actually because I started on my left side. I'm going to duplicate this, control D, or before I duplicate, I'm going to hold, uh, use my move tool, hold D to edit pivot, hold X to snap to grid, drag this here, and then in my channel box, run a modify freeze transformations, and then I'm going to scale it at negative one. Duplicate and then scale at negative one. Now I'm also uh, going to take another look at it from my side view one more time because I'm going to combine these at the moment, both my left and right socket eyes, and I'm going to turn on my symmetry onto object X, and I'm going to go to my vertex. I'm just going to grab this one here. I'm just going to pull this back. Now I know my my reference isn't probably perfect by any means, but I am going to try to follow it a little bit uh, as best as possible anyway to give it the, the, the best possible quality I, I can. And again, I might even rotate this one a little bit more. And that's just to sort of get this this started. OK, 
Okay. And that'll work for now. And then I'm going to run an edit, delete all by type, and history. So that's basically where I'm at with the eyes. So I'm not going too much further than that with the eyes at the moment. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to create uh, the mouth. We're going to do this the same exact way. Switch that to 90 degrees and then go to my attribute editor, poly cylinder, and change this again to 12. And then also delete these faces in the middle. And with uh, <clears throat> uh, symmetry still on, I can do both of these simultaneously and start to form the mouth here. And this is supposed to be about here. And this will come down here. Something like so. Put that one here. And that one there. And there's the start of uh, my lips. Now again, go to edge mode. This time I'm going to turn symmetry off. You can just go here, turn it off. And then I'm going to tap R and extrude. And I'm going to scale these out. All right. All right. Now I'm going to do a uh, mesh display and reverse, just as we did with the um, the eyes. And now, in fact, let me see here. It looks like I need to reverse these as well. Not conform, mesh display reverse. So I just highlighted these ones because it wasn't, uh, it didn't reverse how I thought it would. And then here, I'm going to go ahead and drag this forward. And I also need to model in the mouth. Now, one of the things I'm going to do now little little bit different but I'm gonna bring these down and I'm not gonna have the mouth be let me turn symmetry back on I'm not gonna have the mouth be um, totally closed where the lips are touching I'm going to try to just reframe this a little bit. That one we're going to keep there. This one we're going to bring in. In fact, we're going to bring this one in too a little bit. Yeah. And now I'm going to line the, these up at approximately the same location as I put the ones on top. But I am going to keep that mouth open very subtly. And then again, I'm going to follow the lips as best as I can. Okay. <clears throat> now that I've got that said and done, um, one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert an edge loop right here in the middle. And I'm going to select that entire edge loop. And I'm just going to pull that 
out ever so softly and that's going to create uh, the start of my lips on this back part for now we can just go ahead and delete it we don't really need it at this point um, probably get more in the way than we would like anyway and I'm going to go back to my vert so I'm going to select this one on the very far edge I'm going to turn on my soft select adjust the size of my brush and then I'm going to just start to drag that back and sort of follow the shape of the mouth from the side view and then here probably going to turn off that and that should start the lips so now we have the lips and the eyes okay the last thing I would like to uh, start to do in here is including I'm going to turn off my symmetry turn it off up here just go to off and select this outer edge loop and extrude and I want to turn my symmetry back on and I want to start to create some edge loops here around the mouth and these are going to be a little bit bigger if you will I'm going to do the same thing again I'm turning symmetry off and the reason I'm doing that is because it kind of gets weird if you scale outward um, with symmetry on so and turn symmetry back on and something like that we'll do for now bring this over a little bit more But that typically gives us at least the start of what we're going for. And it, this seems a little bit too much, so I'm going to go ahead and add one more edge loop in there. And I'm going to switch to my front view. And now we see that we have sort of the start of the facial features of this character. And now the last thing I want to do is I want to model in uh, the nose. So I'm going to start by... Um, creating a uh, start with a poly cylinder again and I'm going to just drag this up zoom in on it and on this one on my poly cylinder for the nose I'm going to change it to like uh, I've been doing all the other ones at 12 I'll keep this one at 12 for now and then I'm going to drag this over here and I'm going to delete half of it and also, I'm going to delete this part, the caps. And what I'm going to do here is I probably do have too much geometry. But for now, I'll leave it. I, 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 there's a good chance I'm going to delete it here shortly. And I'm going to start to basically put this into place you know, over here and this is where my mesh doesn't line up perfectly so I'm going to start to add in some edge loops uh, where needed I don't know something like that it doesn't need to be perfect and I'm going to just start to shift these into place And then also, I'm going to follow the shape here. And that's what I was talking about. I just did that weird thing. I don't like when symmetry's on, so it's really just a habit of mine. And 
this one. For now, we're going to delete. Just for now. And then here, bring these out a little bit. And I even think I might have too much. Uh, might be okay. Now I'm going to switch to my side view here. And I can follow my reference pretty closely. I've got some lines here that I can follow. Um, and then I have this part here where the nostril is. And what I typically like to do <clears throat> is this center line here. I like to bring directly in the as close to the middle of the nostril as I can, at least the edge here. And what I'll do from this point, and this one also, bring this back a little bit, bring this one back. What I'm going to do here is um, take both of these, and I'm going to run an extrude, and I'm going to drag it out. And then I can go back to my front reference and take a look and see, um, and just start to line this up so it looks more like a nose instead of a square kind of popping out of it. This is the interior. Take a look here. And this is a sort of the back part of the nose. Something like that. I'm just trying to give it a softer sort of look to it. And now uh, I'm going to select my nose, hold shift I, and then I'm going to turn my symmetry off and just start to bridge Ooh. one, two, three, four, bridge these together with one subdivision level and then I'm gonna select this one and select that one and merge vertices to center and now I've got a pretty good start to my nose probably better to look at it in a smooth view and what I'm gonna do next is I want to create the uh, interior nostril. So I'm going to select just these two. Uh, I'm going to do it in symmetry mode though so I can do both simultaneously. And I'm just going to extrude and extrude them in a little bit. And then I'm just going to drag it up and then bring back in a little bit. And now I've got the interior of my nostril. Something like that. And then I'll tap three on my keyboard again. And you can tell it's starting to look like a nose. Now that I've got that kind of all said and done. Don't, by the way, expect this to look perfect. Uh, whatever you're modeling from, your first try, your first time modeling a 3D face, um, definitely don't expect it to look identical. It's a ch good chance it probably won't. Mine won't even look identical here. Um, so just an FYI, especially since you're just learning, um, don't expect it. Expect it to have uh, even strange features or something like don't expect this to uh, be absolutely perfect okay 
something like that. And all I did was snap those first two back to get this start to the character. All right, so now we have the start of our face. Um, I'll continue pushing forward with this. Um, at this point, what I do is I start to uh, combine everything and I'll just start doing it. So um, one last thing actually, even before I do that is I, I create the Robin mask. So um, the Robin mask, and I'm gonna create even the jaw going around. So based off of our examples, how I do this is I just grab one edge and I have symmetry on and I just start to extrude this out. Ooh, I hate it when it does that. So it looks like I won't be able to do it with symmetry on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here and I'm going to grab the other one. And instead of using symmetry and stuff like that, I'm going to, I'm not, I have symmetry turned off and this is kind of the old way of doing it. Uh, I'm going to click extrude and I'm tap R for scale and I'm just going to start to scale this out. And then again, move it down. And from this point, symmetry should work when I select like one face and I can wrap that around. But for whatever reason, it didn't want to uh, play nice, if you will, uh, when I try to do it the other way. And another thing I can do is actually to make it a little bit easier is I can delete the back side of this nostril. And then I can start to snap some of these into place. And we'll continue. Let's see if it'll work now. Nope. So I'm going to continue this process all the way around. Turn symmetry off. And. moving and scaling and then here is when I'm going to turn my symmetry back on and start to rotate this right and I got to do that in a lot of places basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to line up the topology as I continue to model this okay something like that and what I can do is I can even start to pull these back into you know a rough starting position for this This one goes back here. I can even rotate it. So I know it needs to be rotated a bit. The same thing with the next one. There. And then turn symmetry off selecting both of them and then I'm just extruding these into place and then merging okay So something like that. Oh. All right, so I made my first mistake with my symmetry. 
and I've already showed you how to do this before, so I hope you remembered. But when that happens, you can always just delete half of your model. Make sure your center pivot's in the center. Freeze transformations. Duplicate. Scale negative one on X. Select the other one. Combine. Go to vertices. Select all of them in the middle and merge verts. And now I've got right back to where I started and everything's identical. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this nose, shift select the mouth, and I'm going to combine them. And I'm going to start to merge my verts. So I know these ones underneath the nose need to be merged. All right? And then I would like to see how this goes. And I really need to figure out how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to start here, merge vert. These two, I'm going to merge to center. And just in case it's not doing it on this side, I'm going to do it on both sides at the same time. And I'm tapping G for last tool used. And now I run into this subtle little issue here with the nostril and this section. So how can I adjust this? My first thought is maybe something like that, but that doesn't work. So I think what I'll do is I'll add an extra edge loop in here. For now and just see if that helps my scenario a little bit. And it does a little bit. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to merge these verts. And I'm going to, with this little hole here, I'm going to hold shift, go right click, and I'm going to go to fill hole. And it looks a little weird at the moment. And I'm going to just cut this triangle in just to give it the information that it needs. Okay. I'm going to tap three on my keyboard. And I really do want to get rid of this um, triangle area here. <clears throat> and it looks like I will need to flip this again. But I really need to fix this area. And what I think I'm going to try to do little geometry, hopefully 101, if this works the way I want it to. And then from here, I can delete that one, hopefully. And now I've just created a little edge loop around the nose. And I've got still my uh, geometry wrapping around the jaw. And these what did I do? Oh, it just doesn't look right on that side. Okay, so I just have to delete this half of the face again unfortunately scale it at negative one combine it and merge the verts and at this point I'm gonna do an edit delete all by type and history and take a look at it with my wireframe on shaded off starting to look like a person starting to I can also switch into my side viewport 
and begin to make adjustments as needed here. And something like that should be fine. All right. And let's soften edge. And let's tap three just to make sure all my verts are merged. And so far, so good. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now I'm going to start to do the same thing for the. Uh, Robin mask as I call it and I want it to select just these outside ones turn shading and wireframe on shaded for now and I'm basically going to extrude just these and then I'm going to grab these edges and I'm going to run a bridge. And I'm going to add just one subdivision for now. Or uh, three. And I'm going to do the same thing from previously. Now I've got the start of this. Now I'm going to combine the eyes to the nose. And I'm going to take this edge and bridge it. And take this nose and bridge it. And now what I've got is uh, basically the start of this. So um, what I think I'll do is merge these and then bridge and three and merge these verts. And now I'm gonna fill this hole Hold shift, right click, fill hole. And now I'm going to begin to cut in the geometry that I need. And I'm also going to switch to symmetry and cut in one more edge loop just to. get the proper geometry in there. And now I've created my Robin mask, as you can see. I've created the edge loop around here, and I've created the edge loop around the mouth. Now, I've got that all said and done. I'm going to cut this video short for now. And when we get back, we're going to start to fill in the rest of the information in the face. So if you have any questions, I know this is a tough one. Uh, definitely shoot me a message. Um, and we will uh, continue this in the next video. Um, I know this can be difficult, but it is definitely uh, definitely. Um, extremely extremely useful information uh, again um, definitely take a look at face topology on Google or something like that just to get an idea um, and we're gonna smooth this out here shortly so it doesn't look so all right um, anyway uh, that's all I've got for you up to this point and um, stay tuned for the next video and thank you for watching